most of us are still, most of us are still, uh, oh, let me give permission to record. There we go. <laughs> um, most of us are still working from home in some capacity. We're still um, at the, you know, dealing with this pandemic. And um, a lot of adjustment has taken place over the last however many months, over a year. Um, so we're looking at that and um, I'll move into some centering and grounding practices. And then I really wanna spend the bulk of today um, with an introduction of uh, emergent strategy, um, using inspiration from emergent strategy, which is based off of um, Adrian Marie Brown's book, Emergent Strategy. Um, I don't know if folks are live because I can't see you, but um, let me know either in the chat or if you can speak up if anyone is familiar with emergent strategy. I'm gonna stop my share for a second so I can see if anyone say anything. Who was the author again? I did kind of blurt that out really quickly, didn't I? Adrian Marie Brown. I'll put that in the chat box too. I can share top of that that we at the Alliance, um, the uh, the kind of supervisors team has been spending time with the book. We have read it together as a group and we've been going over the assessment like by bits and pieces um, as, as a team, which has been really fun. That's incredible. Well, I know, and that's actually kind of how I came to you all, right? Right, my original like, contact with yeah. Elise. Yeah. <laughs> um, I met Elise at the Emergent Strategy Ideation, Ideation Institute in Detroit in 2018, I believe. 2019. Yeah. yeah. No, 2018. So yeah. So Emergent Strategy, I found. Um, I I just I love to bring it into different spaces, into different workshops, and it, I find it personally just wildly inspiring and um she offers a set of principles and elements which i'll go over today and um and that can be as you know used as tools to apply to whatever you want to apply it to and so uh, emergent strategy is about you know the sub subtitle is shaping change changing worlds so it's about transformation it's about adaptation it's about change and that's the moment that we're in right um so uh, we will tap into that shortly. And I see here someone noted, you've attended other web conferences about the book and haven't gotten around to reading it yet. There's still time, there's always time. <laughs> um, all right, so we're gonna move into a brief centering practice. Um, I'm not sure if, if all of you were at, at part one. Um, I did a longer centering practice in part one. Um, today, I want to spend more time with emergent strategy. So we're just gonna do a quick centering practice and a quick uh, grounding kind of get back in your body kind of practice. So um, just modeling that the longer practice I did last time can be done super briefly. Um, we center in the centering practice that I'm gonna offer. Um, we center in length, width, and depth, right? So just take a moment to, wherever you are, um, settle in and allow yourself to just start to feel the sensations in your body. Notice um, where you're at today in your soma, mood, energy, what um, does your body need? And then let that attention just drop down into your center, in your core, in your gut. And from there, we always wanna center on purpose. So bring an, an intention for yourself for this centering practice and, and maybe for your day. What do you want to center around? What's your intention? And take a nice deep inhale. 
filling up in length. Nice extended exhale. Feel that breath flow through the length of your body and beyond extending up and out the top of your head, down and out the bottom of your feet. Take another breath. Just noticing where you are in length in this moment. Returning to center, taking a nice deep inhale again, filling up in width. Exhale, extending out to your edges and beyond. Noticing where you are in width where you are in relationship to others, to space beyond yourself. Let your jaw relax. Let your tongue lie weighted in your lower jaw. Let your shoulders drip away from your ears. Go ahead and take another deep inhale. Filling up in depth, front to back. Nice extended exhale in depth, feeling that breath move forward and out, back and out. Really paying attention to where you are in your personal depth, relationship to front, future, back. Finding yourself balanced and center. And coming back, wrapping up the practice, returning to your, your center and your core. Noticing how you feel on the other side of the centering practice, noticing what more you can resource in your body. Noticing um, if there's any mood shift or emotion. Good. So that's a much briefer version of the centering practice that I think I took like 30 minutes last time. Um, just to show that we can do that really quickly. And quite honestly, um, you know, if you ever work with a somatics practitioner, there's so many practices and exercises beyond the centering practice that really do um, tap back into the centering practice, right? And recognizing um, somatic awareness and, and where we're at um, in relationship to our own soma and how our soma is responding to uh, situations and you know experiences that we're a part of or that are around us, right? And then learning how to resource our 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 own innate intelligence um, to to make those shifts and changes that we need throughout throughout the day, throughout anything that we're doing. Um, the next kind of uh, embodied practice that I want to do is um, more of a, a energizing one. So feel free to stand up if you want to. I'm kind of in a cramped space, so I'm going to stay seated. Um, but this is just about like, you know, maybe you um, need to head somewhere into a meeting or you're presenting and you just want to be a little more alive. You want to get back into your body. Um, this is a really good one to kind of shift your energy. So um, I'm going to pretend we're all staying. If you're standing, um, this is just called shake it out. So we're literally going to shake it out. <laughs> um, start with your right hand and just like literally loosely shake it out. Let it hang. Let that shake kind of gently move up your arm and into your shoulder. And let that go. And then go to your left side. Shake your hand out. 
let that movement flow up into your arm, shake it out. You can even kind of like hang over a little bit so it really just hangs there out of the shoulder socket. Of course, paying attention to your own needs. If anything doesn't feel right, if you have any injuries, take care of yourself. You can visualize this practice. And let that shake just kind of uh, reverberate throughout your body. Good, let that go. Go to your right foot. Kind of let your ankle move around, let your foot shake. You can pick it up, balance on the other side, on the other leg. Let that shake and that movement move up your leg, up into your hip if you can. Remember to breathe that leg back down, pick up the other foot, shake your left foot. And let that shake move up your leg, up into your hip. Let the rest of your body kind of naturally move. Let that go. And then with uh, both legs on the ground, even if you're seated, you can do this. Um, let yourself bounce, dropping energy down into the ground. And incorporate all that shaking. So shake your arms, let yourself bounce. Don't worry, no one's looking at you. <laughs> Let your arms and your legs shake. Let that move into your torso. You can kind of bend forward. Let your shoulders get into that and your head. Let yourself breathe. And stop. And feel that energy course through your body. Breathing, just noticing aliveness, energy. Again, tapping into what that does for your, for your mood, your emotional state. Awesome. All right. Um, how are folks doing? I so wish I could see you. Check in, <laughs> check in in the chat box. How was centering? How was shake it out? Do you have a preference? As folks are kind of enter, uh, taking notes in, in the chat box, um, we can prepare for the next bit, which is have something to write with. Oh, I love it. Diane uses centering a lot. Doing good, feeling good, woohoo. Feeling a bit more centered. Yeah. I personally love that, that feeling of when, you know, after the shake it out exercise and you just, you go to that moment of stillness and you feel that like energy. I like shake it out, um, felt really good. Nice reminder of how to re-energize, yeah. I've been in spaces too where, you know, you can do the shake it out. You can also like, if you're facilitating a space, you can turn some music on and like dance, right? And then just stop. Trying to be present, still working on it. I hear you. Yeah. Feeling relaxed. Thank you. Um, all right, so grab um, something to write with. We're gonna move into a little reflection here. Um, I'll share my screen just so that you can see the prompt. Um, reflect on uh, what change you want to experience. That's where you can see the scheme. Either, was someone talking to me? I don't think so, okay. Um, what change do you want to experience or see for yourself? And what about for your work? Let's take a couple minutes to just jot down free flow. Doesn't have to be perfect. You're not gonna be required to read this out loud. Um, a few notes about the kind of change or transformation you'd like to experience or see for yourself and for your work.
Now, I know I said that you won't have to read this out loud, but if anyone wants to share, please feel free to do so. Um, you can enter in the chat box or on live. I'm gonna stop the share so that I can see if anyone's typing in the chat box. What kind of change do you want to experience for yourself and or for your work? Maybe different things. And tying this into emergent strategy, recognizing that um, this work that we do, right, as advocates is largely about transformation, right, healing and transformation. Most of my goals, both personally and professionally, involve confidence and lessening of anxiety. Yeah. I hear that. Mm -hmm. I think too, when I reflect on um, like the change that we want to see for our work, um, you might even reflect on like if your if your agency has like sh you know a shared um, well, obviously you can look at the you know the vision and the and and um, all of that. And, you know, is there a, a theory of change model, right? What's the ultimate vision, the highest vision? How do we want to get there, right? So we're going kind of meta with this, looking at um, what would it be like to envision a world without violence? I think in the many years I've been doing this work, around 15 years or so, um, you know, there's peaks and valleys with respect to how you stay motivated in this work and um, recognizing that um, sometimes it can feel really um, cyclical, right? We start to see patterns, patterns in our approaches to working with ending violence, to working with healing. So we just have an opportunity here to, to reflect on that. And let me move on to the next slide. I'm gonna share my screen so you can see this. Um, this next screen is just showing um, the principles from our emergent strategy. Again, kind of tools we can use, inspiration, um, looking at small as good, small as all, right? When we're looking at this grand vision and goal of there being no violence in the world, it's like, okay, that just is impossible, right? <laughs> so where can we start, right? Small as good, small as all. And that's about being focused on the, you know, perhaps the family you're working with currently, in that moment, the meeting you're at, um, the folks that you're, you're coordinating with, all of that. Um, change is constant, be like water. I love that visual. Um, there's always enough time for the right work. There is a conversation that only the people in this room right now can have. Let's find it. Trust the people, if you trust them, they become trustworthy. Move at the speed of trust. Connection is more important than mass, which I feel very much relates to that small is good, small is all. Less prep, more presence, right? Um, what you pay attention to grows. Never a failure, always a lesson. Like how do we pick ourselves back up when we feel like perhaps we failed in the moment? Um, 
yeah, just focus on these principles and note what stands out for you, what inspires you. I'd love to see in the chat box if anyone wants to share their favorite principle or the one that resonates with you the most. Don't be shy. <laughs> Never a failure, always a lesson. Yeah. Such a good one. There's always enough time for the right work. Yeah. So I'll be um, emailing this document out for folks so you can save it. Of course, buy the book if you can, <laughs> if you don't have it already. All right, we're going to move on to the elements. Um, the elements again are, you know, you can apply the principles to the elements. The elements are inspiration from nature and um, existing patterns in the world. And we can look at them and, um, and in, in multiple ways, right? There's one um, just looking at what resonates with you. What do you vibe with the most? Um, and also how might you apply your strengths in any of these areas of these elements to whatever it is that you're working on? Mm. Fractals. Fractals um, is about the nature between small and large. I have a handout for this as well that um, will be coming to you if you ever want to reflect back on it. Um, the relationship between the small and the large. Um, I'm gonna share a quote from the book for each one of these elements. And um, if you haven't seen the book, the book really goes into like a chapter for each element in, in much more detail than we have time today. So a fractal is a never ending pattern. Fractals are infinitely complex patterns that are self similar across different scales. They are created by repeating a simple process over and over in an ongoing feedback loop. So we're looking at cycles that repeat, we're looking at repetition, we're looking at patterns. There are patterns all over um, in nature. Um, you can look at like the petals of a flower and how they repeat. Um, uh, and it's also about that relationship of, you know, small and large. What, when, when we tap into to the small piece of a larger issue, right? What is the relationship? And how does, you know, my relation, my, um, the energy that I put into, say, myself, my family, how does that translate to the energy that I put into school, work, my community, etc. Adaptation. <clears throat> Adaptation is about change. It's about um, how we respond to positive and negative changes and the int intention that we, we have behind that. Um, the ability to navigate changes with ease. And uh, there's also a, a, a piece of seeing conflict as generative within adaptation, right? That there's always room for growth. Um, a quote from the book, the heart of emergent strategy. How we live and grow and stay purposeful in the face of constant change actually does determine both the quality of our lives and the impact that we can have when we move into action together. Next, we have interdependence and decentralization. This is all about who we are and how we share. A quote from the book, building community is to the collective as spiritual practice is to the individual. And this is about sharing responsibility, leaning in and leaning on others, being comfortable taking a step back, resting, letting someone else take the lead. It's a bottom-up approach. 
it's moving away from hierarchical structures, leaving space for more discussion and ideation. We consider those last pieces, right? Like moving away from hierarchical structures and creating space for more ideation. How would that alone impact your work, right? For the most part, we work in very hierarchical structures. What would it be like if we all shared leadership? How might we? that. The next element is nonlinear and iterative. This is about the pace and pathways of chance. One of the quotes is, as we are, so it will be. Another quote. We have a way of doing things that is so steeped in critique that I often wonder if we would strangle movement before it could blossom. It's looking at unconscious practices, practices that may deny us of our true selves, our true power, our collectivism and recognizing that we can put, place intention into our practices, right? Um, creating the, the repetition and muscle memory into embodiment. So looking at what do I practice? What do I practice for myself? What do I practice at work? What are the practices in my collective um, you know, organizations? Right? Are there check-ins? Is there community accountability? What's the level of active listening? Another quote from the book from Jenny Lee. Um, the role of organizers in an ecosystem is to be earthworms, processing and aerating soil, making fertile ground out of the nutrients of sunlight, water, and everything else that dies to nurture the next cycle of life. And the next one is resilience and transformative justice. This is how we recover and how we transform. Um, what resilience practices you and your organizations do. Um, and looking at um, how you show up, right? Um, it's again, looking at conflict as being uh, generative, personal, community, and systemic transformation, community action, healing, accountability, transformation of the social conditions that perpetuate violence. And a quote from the book on resilience and transformative justice. I want us to do better. I want to feel like we are responsible for each other's transformation. Not the transformation from vibrant, flawed humans to bits of ash, but rather the transformation from broken people and communities to whole ones. I believe transformative justice could yield deeper trust, resilience, and interdependence. All these mass and intimate punishments keep us small and fragile. And right now our movements and people within them need to be massive and complex and strong. And with respect to creating more possibilities, this is about how we move toward life. What is it to reach for and tap into our aliveness so that we can bring forth our true selves into, into our life, into our livelihood? It's about living a life that honors all of your talents and gifts. 
and also recognizing your unique gifts. A couple quotes from the book. Meaningful collaboration both relies on and deepens relationship. The stronger the bond between the people or groups in collaboration, the more possibility you can hold. And the more people who co-create the future, the more people whose concerns will be addressed from the foundational level in this world. So with all of that, I know it's a super, super, super rough overview <laughs> of emergent strategy elements and principles. I wanna move into breakout groups. And let me stop the share really quick. Um, in the breakout groups, um, I want you to consider uh, what you jotted down earlier in your reflection, right? Around what kind of change you would like to experience or see for yourself or for your work, right? And then just have a conversation, take turns in your, in your groups, um, applying some of these elements or principles to the change that you'd like to experience or see, right? How might fractals, be a part of that, right? When we're looking at the relationship of the small to the large. What about um, aspects of adaptation in relationship to the um, change that you want to see, right? Like how, how do we move through that change? What are the ways? Um, what aspects of interdependence and decentralization might make that change possible that you seek? With respect to nonlinear and iterative, that's going to be looking at the patterns, looking at um, um, what what practices do I need to employ in order to reach for this particular change that I seek. What are the resilience practices, right? How might I um, be open to creating more possibilities with this? Maybe maybe the change that you wrote down, maybe it's even bigger than that, right? creating more possibilities, looking at how can I use this inspiration to ideate and build upon. Um, so we're gonna go into breakout rooms. I'm gonna hop around in the breakouts and I do have a breakdown of what I shared of from each element that I'm gonna email. Um, uh, I'm going to have Jesse email out to everyone so you can look forward to that. I don't know if that'll happen today, probably, um, but soon enough. And here we go. We have to, we can do, let's see here. All right, I'll see you momentarily. Folks are joining. I'm so curious to hear from you about how you guys are employing emergent strategy. We don't know why we're there yet, starting to implement processing. And I um, am like, uh, I asked the team that I supervised if they were interested because I kind of could already see some places that we like I think you know Elise had kind of brought some of it to the team previously but I don't know how many of the team members at the time had read the book so we're all going to read it together like my team's going to read it together and then we're going to kind of start talking through how we can apply because I think there's just like there's some really obvious felt like some really obvious things that we as a program team could be doing mm -hmm. and some things that I thought we were already doing right like we have a fully decentralized power, but there was stuff that we do around shared agenda making and sharing kind of responsibilities around facilitation, you know, within our team and that kind of stuff. But I think it's very, it's a little superficial, but I think it's like a jumping off point for us. Um, totally. Yeah. And I mean, I think there's lots of possibilities in it. And I think there's like the, the piece of the team is very already like fairly adaptable, I think. Like, I think. I've already seen this in them as a team, like as like new things come up, they're pretty flexible and willing to kind of make yeah. shifts and changes as a group. And 
Um, so it's been pretty exciting. Uh, you know, I've only been in my position for 11 months and I have okay. two very new members of my team. Like, so, you know, we replaced Elise. Um, and then yeah. we're probably going to have someone else new coming on fairly soon in like the next probably six months. So there's been a lot of change. They've had to do a lot of shifting and adapting. And yeah. Adapting. Yeah. It's so neat too, to see like how an organization adapts to change. Right. Yeah. Like, and yeah. And, yeah. and that's not necessarily everyone's like, you know, element that they, vibe with the most. Right, right. I know, I know, I know. And it's, I mean, it's so interesting. And I think like there's, uh, there's a lot of change occurring in our organization right now. And I think that's, uh, yeah. you know, we, our executive director started in her position as executive director a week before I came on or two weeks before I came on, had been with the organization already for like, you know, a decade but started as the ED, like pretty, so she's a new ED and is like yeah. trying to implement a number of changes that I think are all like really positive and wonderful, um, yeah. but is like forcing, especially those who've been with the organization to have to like really figure out like where they're like, where, how they make those changes and adapt. And right. um, yeah, and that goes back to that, like um, how do we balance this like decentralization when we recognize that like our organizations oftentimes wouldn't run without some kind of hierarchical structure, right? Yeah. Like it, it, it's like we're not there yet as right. a society. Right. right. <laughs> and Unfortunately. I think like, yeah, and I think one of the things that like really struck me as we were talking about among the supervisors is you know the piece around adaptation. Like, me, like there's a piece around it that you know I think she talks about that there's like everyone has to be kind of ready for change, right? Or kind of like be on board. How do you get everyone to be on board with change around the same thing, right? I think everyone is like, yeah, there are things I wanna change, but like, can we all get on board with the same elements of change? Um, right. So that's like one of the things that I'm like so perplexed right. by, like how do we get everyone to- And one thing that like, cause I, you know, when I was the last agency that I worked for, I got there and I, I, I created a, program like the mm. we didn't have like the department that I came in and ended up being manager and director of and so that was a huge change for the organization mm. and one of the things that I found really useful was doing like reflection on like what is our relationship to change yeah uh, right because we bring in to the moment like our historical patterns our our sure. historical experience and so there's so much anxiety for so many people around change. And then like, I personally, when I reflect on it myself, I'm like, I moved many times as a child mm. and I'm like, change is nothing. I'm like, sure. Throw me in. <laughs> I've done this. I love that. I love that. <laughs> All right. I, I should I go in. Yeah, you can just bounce around. And I, I would, um, do you want to, I mean, I couldn't, like, I think because I'm co-hosting, I didn't, you weren't able to put me somewhere. I don't know if it's helpful for me to um, jump sorry. into. Yeah, if you want to jump into maybe room three, since one person, ha it's yeah. just two people. Yeah. And then I'm going to hop around. I'll see. We're going to be here for a while. I mean, I think it'll take me like 15 minutes to hop okay. through. Um, all right.
Maybe so. Looks like it. Um, I had the opportunity to pop into an, uh, a couple different breakout groups and, and hear what folks were sharing. Um, I heard a lot around just looking at um, wanting change, like at the systemic level, um, looking at um, how do we how do we work with law enforcement, policing? Um, how do we tackle um, you know, healing and mental health for survivors? What the reflections they got from the breakouts and and any takeaways from emergent strategy that kind of stuck with you today? Feel free to put stuff in the chat too. Yes, feel free to use the chat. I missed what you said. You had cut out for a little bit. Oh, did I? Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I was just asking folks to share any reflections or takeaways from emergent strategy and how that applied to your conversations around change that you want to see. So in, in my group, um, Nani actually, her and I had a conversation um, weeks ago about law enforcement and wanting change in law enforcement um, and how to better approach victims and support victims and survivors. Um, yeah, that was that was mostly what we spoke about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I remember t joining your group and us talking a little bit about what it might look like to create more possibilities, right? Like what currently exists and a little bit of like analysis of, um, if we look at the anti-violence movement, right? And, and the history of our movement, right? What are the roots of our movement, right? What lessons have we learned over time? And, and what, what do we see repeating? Right. And what do we need, you know, individually and as agencies um, to, to make the change happen that we want, right? Um, any other thoughts around that? Other ideas? I was gonna try to call you out because you're the only other face I can see, but your name looks like program team. <laughs> Name is Nani. Hi. Program team. Yes. I was in a group with uh, Gina and Mora, oh, and they're both from the WFC. So, uh, as we just kind of like talked a little bit, I'm like trying to like remember because my brain's not entirely working today. So I'm sorry. Um, but we yeah. talked a little bit about kind of actually. But Gina mentioned that there was like an increase in phone calls after like now that things are opening up again in the ways that that is like putting a lot of pressure and like stress on um, a lot of the advocates. So I was just kind of like thinking about that. Yeah. Yeah. And then both of them also mentioned something about like the about change um, and like how change is like water and like the ways that they have um, kind of like been adapting a lot more because of this role um, and their function as advocates. So, right. and I was thinking about that too. What are some of the ways that you've adapted with the, the changes, particularly around, you know, the pandemic and, and workflow? I mean, I can't answer that because I'm not in direct service. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and I got hired during the pandemic. So everything is fine. <laughs> You're like the chain? I'm not so sure. Yeah, I have but... no idea what normal looks like, so. Uh, oh, right, I know, it's wild. <laughs> yeah, I 
I'm, I've been hearing a lot. I've, I, I'm no longer working at, uh, well, I do some consulting with a uh, rape crisis here in San Francisco, but, um, you know, the agency I worked at previously, Weave in Sacramento, it's been awe-inspiring to hear how they've adapted, you know, to the to the pandemic and the ability to still maintain um, services during this time um, remotely, um, adapt, you know, different adaptations to their safe house. And certainly, like you said, like the increase in calls, right? Because folks are home and some folks are not safe and just having those hotlines available and, and, and upping that access for folks, right? Um, I know that they also developed like chat services in order for folks to be able to tap in that way and really worked on their website to make that more accessible. It's been incredible. And, you know, with respect to change, we're now moving into reintegration, coming back into the offices, it's some in-person services and that type of thing, right? In your roles, um, what 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 are your hopes for as you reintegrate? My hope is probably just um, back to a little bit more normalcy. Um, being able to provide those services in person again for clients, because I do feel that those are in-person services are so much more effective than phone conversation or Zoom. Zoom is, you know, still pretty good, but I think that in-person interaction alone has so much more, um, uh, effect, I guess. I, I don't, I can't think of the right word. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, so yeah, that's my thought. Yeah. And it sounds like for you, you're not doing in uh, direct services, but you know, even looking at like from like the program programmatic level, right? Like, we're adjusting to the questions and the needs of advocates and obviously clients. Um, I was thinking too about um, just the opportunity that we have. We reintegrate, right? And there's, I'm seeing a lot more flexibility in agencies or just the fact that like this shift has really shaken things up, right? And we're seeing what has become possible <laughs> to even maintain services, right? That alone has been, I, th I feel wildly inspiring. Um, I am curious too, um, kind of like how Jesse was saying that they've implemented some emergent strategy um, ideation concepts like within their organization. Are there any, is there any aspect, I know it was a really brief overview of, you know, things that we talked about today that you could see being implemented into your work? Did you show us the image again? Yeah. And then prior to that, this is principles. There was a conversation in one of the groups to around um, looking at uh, decentralization and looking at uh, the structures of our organizations and how power is distributed uh, decisions in, in how processes are, are, are made, right? And who do we report to and who do we 
um, like who's responsible, right? And um, how we might redistribute the power dynamic there, right? So next time we are going to um, be focusing more on like the systemic level. So that was kind of interesting to hear today that that naturally came up. Um, and let me see, oh, did I cut you off? You wanted to look at this. Was there anything that you wanted to say after? No, okay. Let me close this really quick to go back to. So next time we're gonna be um, looking at our values and roles and the challenges that arise in our work. Um, and the goal, the outcome goals are for participants to gain a better understanding of values that you bring into your roles and how to face challenging situations. And we'll also be looking at boundaries. Um, I was talking with a group earlier around again, kind of looking back and reflecting on historical experiences and patterns that have happened you know, previously and how that shows up in the present, we'll be looking at exploring boundaries and how you know, our individual boundaries, um, our experience in developing our own boundaries, how they show up in our work, um, particularly um, in advocacy work where we are engaging in these various systems. Right, um, where there are we're faced with many challenges. Right, so start to give thought to you know what um, what situations you might want to to have in mind for that next time. And um, uh, again, I'll be sharing the two documents. The um, I have a printout of this one here the emergent strategy principles that we just um, I just shared, and also a document that goes over the elements of emergent strategy. And so you can start to kind of do some pre-work too around like, hmm, if I kind of embody, say, one of the elements, right, of emergent strategy, how might, from that, from that vantage point, how might I approach this challenge, right? Um, so that's a little bit of pre-work to do. Let's see, oh, let's check in the chat box. Um, we are going to wrap up here pretty soon. And I want to share a poem for all of you. And this is um, from another book by Adrienne Marie Brown. We have a little AMB theme today. This is Pleasure Activism. It's an incredible book. Um, it's um, about the politics of feeling good. So in the, uh, maybe the last chapter, this is a radical gratitude spell. And she offers this as a spell to cast upon meeting a stranger, comrade or friend working for social and or environmental justice and liberation. So I wanted to share it with all of you in appreciation of the work that you all do um, I know it's super challenging and I have so much deep admiration and respect for all of you in all the different ways that you are changing the world. Um, all right, here it is. You are a miracle walking. I greet you with wonder. In a world which seeks to own your joy and your imagination, you have chosen to be free every day as a practice. I can never know the struggles you went through to get here, but I know you have swum upstream and at times it has been lonely. I want you to know I honor the choices you made in solitude and I honor, honor the work you have done to belong. I honor your commitment to that which is larger than yourself and your journey, to love the particular container of life that is you. You are enough, your work is enough, you are needed, your work is sacred. You are here and I am grateful. Thank you all so much for joining me today and I look forward to seeing you on the 22nd. Thank you so much, Tabitha, for another mm -hmm. great session. And I'm putting a link to the evaluation here, but it will get sent out to all of you as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Absolutely, take care everyone. Thanks Have everyone. Thank you.
Did you need anything from me, Jesse? I don't need anything from you. All right. I'm gonna, we're ending a little early. I hope that's okay.